Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a how-to video, the simplest and easiest way how to create a black smoky eye. Now the reason I've decided to do this video is because of you guys, my followers, in particular my Instagram followers. Now I created um, a makeup look, a black smoky eye one, just to go to work. It was nothing special. Put the picture on Instagram and so many of you asked me to do a tutorial. I have never been asked so many times for one specific look of my Instagram post to be created into a tutorial that I thought, let me listen to my loves and let me create something that they wanted to see. So I'm just inserting the picture here so you can see what it looks like and I'm going to do an exact duplicate recreation of that look. It was very, very easy, very, very simple, but the only thing that is required is a lot of patience because there is a lot of blending required because you have to use black. Now, you have to use, in particular, matte black. Now, as you guys know, matte shades can be difficult to blend out as it is, but then you throw in the color black and it becomes even more difficult and a lot of people tend to shy away from black anyway, or a lot of people just tend to use black to darken up looks rather than just to use matte black as the main base shade of the look. So this is going to be a talk through video as well just so that I can explain myself in a little bit more detail. So what I've done so far is I've done my foundation which is just the LA Girl HD full coverage pro something foundation I think my I'll list my shade below and I've done my eyebrows off camera so that I can just focus on the eyes in this video so what I'm going to be using is the same palette that I used in that Instagram post and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills soft glam palette I know that so many people love this palette just as I do and it is an excellent palette that I think everybody should have in their collection because it has so many kind of day-to-day -day shades that most people tend to go for browns caramels warm tones that sort of thing starting off with a base for the eyes i'm going to be using the p louise base my shade is in rumor number two and the purpose of this is to keep your eyeshadow in place all day to make your eyeshadow easy to blend as well now because i did my eyebrows already there is a bit of concealer around them and concealer under my brows so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the base to go up to where the concealer is but not necessarily blending it into the concealer a little bit goes a really long way with this stuff so you don't really have to apply that much but the focus of the base should always be predominantly on the lid rather than on the brow bone area because the natural oils in your eyes tend to come out in on your lid rather than at the top and you don't have creases up there anyway you have creases down below so this stops creasing as well throughout the day so now because the eyeshadow base is a little bit tacky and needs to dry Either I tend to use a setting powder to just lightly dust over the eyeshadow base to smooth it and make it soft and non-sticky or if there is a similar neutral shade in the eyeshadow palette I will just use that and dust it all over the eye. So that's what I'm going to do in this instance. I'm going to be using the shade called Tempera which is like an ivory matte shade. And I'm going to use the Sigma E4 T tapered blending brush. This one's really old so it's gone a bit scraggly. So I'm just going to use this all over the eyes. So here you can see I've basically neutralized my entire eye, getting rid of my natural skin color underneath, meaning that other colors will show up a lot more vibrant. And now it is soft and smooth because there is now powder on it and it is not sticky anymore either. And what I'm going to do is because I want this look to be really crisp, I don't want it to look like raccoon eyes, big, big black smudges, that sort of thing. I'm going to use this MUA Artist Tape from Primark. It costs £1, but you can always just use some sticky back tape or scotch tape. It's just because I have this and I hadn't used it yet and I wanted to use it. <laughs> it's very easy to just rip off so just rip off a small strip and then just apply it from the corner of the bottom of your eye to the tip of your eyebrow wherever that may be and it's uh feels like I've just given myself some sort of temporary facelift but it's all good it's not a very hardcore kind of um tape now I've also got these 
eyeshadow covers which is a 30 pack for £1.50 from Primark. Now when working with something like black it can very easily spatter over the bottom of your eye area onto other parts of your makeup. Now I have intentionally not done my under eye concealer yet so that I can do that afterwards but then to also stop the black eyeshadow catching in my foundation and then getting mixed in with it I'm going to apply this under the eyes. This is optional now bear in mind as long as you tap off your brush enough you shouldn't get that much fallout but this is just like in an ideal world ideal solution I'm just showing you what I would do especially if I had extra time um, at the beginning of the day to take extra time to do my makeup. When I actually did that picture I didn't use a shadow shield so I'm just doing it for the purposes of the video. Oh my god, I totally feel like my eyes are suffocating right now. Let me just move this around. I'm just sticking it on the edge of the tape, to be honest. Once I've done the black, I'm totally taking them off because I feel like I can't see properly. Normally, when I do my eyeshadows, I tend to do my brow bone highlight first, and I always prefer to have something shimmery. If the rest of my eyes are going to be completely matte, it makes sense to offset that by having a slightly shimmery brow bone so it's not all completely matte. But in terms of working with a matte and a shimmer, it can be very easy with one brush to accidentally blend over the shimmery shade and drag it into the matte. Which is why in this instance, I would suggest doing your brow bone highlight last. So the first thing I'm going to do is use this brush here, which is the Morphe M330 Tapered Blending Brush. It's a very long but soft and fluffy brush, which is one of my favourite ones and the reason why I own so many of them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take the shade Burnt Orange and I am going to apply that to the crease first. And the reason that I'm doing that is and not starting off with the black first is because I want to set almost like a base and almost like a boundary line where I don't want to go above that because when you work with black you have to start off with a little bit and then build up that colour otherwise you can end up with black going too high up and you don't want that. So just dabbing my brush in a few times, flicking it off, let's start to build up that colour. So just going backwards and forwards in windshield wiper motions in the upper crease area. Not trying to make it a really intense shade, it's got to be something fairly soft which is why I, picks, I picked a mix between an orangey shade and a more caramel shade. So keep blending backwards and forwards so that it is nice and soft and diffused. All right, so now we're gonna go in with the matte black shade and that's called Noir. That is a shade that is in quite a lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes. It's a very good quality, very intensely pigmented black matte eyeshadow. Now the best kind of brush that I find to use for applying a matte black shade is a eyeshadow brush but one which is fairly fluffy because what I find is that when you apply it to your eyelid it gives the edges more of a diffused appearance making it a lot more easier to blend. If you use one which is more of a flat shader brush you'll find the line to be a lot harsher and therefore a lot more difficult to blend. So the one that I'm using today is the Sigma uh, E55 eye shading brush. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to apply a slight amount all over my lid but I'm not going to go into the higher points of my lid. If you've got hooded eyes or smaller lid, obviously you guys know I've got a lot of lid space to play with but I know that doesn't apply to everybody. So what I want you to do is to go halfway over your eyeball and then what will happen is afterwards when you start to blend it, you will find that the black slowly travels up slightly. So if you have got smaller hooded eyes, that way you won't swallow your eyes into your face, if that makes sense. So dab your brush in a couple of times, tap it off. And then start to pat it on. Don't drag it around because that causes drag marks. Pat it on. And then really start to kind of build up that colour. Remember the most concentration you want is on the lower part of the lid. So that when you start to blend it upwards there's a nice like, gradual diffusion of shade. Okay so now your eyes should look a little bit something like this. Very odd looking I know but can you see that there's space up there because I didn't go the full way into my lid. And I have really concentrated the colour all over this area here right up into the edge. 
So now what we're going to do is we are going to start to blend out these lines. They aren't too harsh because of the fluffy brush that I used. So the next shade that I'm now going to use is the shade called Rustic, which is more of a kind of a cool toned brown. Now it's up to you whether you want to have a cool toned look or a warm toned look. I'm going for more of a cool toned look today because I tend to find personally that black sits with better within the cool toned shade range and within that family of cool toned looks. So the brush that I'm going to use for this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills A12 brush. So it is another fluffy brush. I, the size of the brush will definitely depend on the size of your eyes. As I've said, because I've got quite a lot of lid space, I can use a larger fluffy brush. If you've got smaller lid space, I would suggest something a little bit smaller because you don't want to drag the black up too high if you've got less space to play with. So load up your brush fairly generously tap it off and start to blend right directly above the black line. What you will find first off is that the black starts to turn slightly grey as it mixes with the brown but that's fine we'll get that intensity back later. For now it's all about blending out that line above it but without having to use black to do it because you want a soft diffusion of colour. So as you should be able to see by now that line is starting to slowly disappear but black is very difficult to blend so you've got to be really patient but what I'm not doing is taking this brush and taking it upwards otherwise too much darkness will start to appear at the top so I'm just keeping it in this area and blending it backwards and forwards backwards and forwards if anything I'm pulling my brush slightly down into the black so that I don't go up too high accidentally. And if you do feel that the line above is starting to get a bit dark, take that first brush where we use burnt orange just to blend around the edges to slightly soften out the colour because there is no extra colour on this brush. Okay, so now I'm sure it looks odd, but the lines, the dark lines have been blended out, but there is a nice difference of grey into the black. So now we need to fix that to bring a little bit more of the black back into the look. So again, Go in with that same Sigma brush, tap it off, and then start to dab it again in the same place. Take the same Anastasia brush with no extra product, and again blend around the edges. Right, now my favourite part of doing this look is actually blending with the black. Now that we have set the kind of the parameters, we have set the area and blended around here, there still needs to be a very nice diffusion of black into the brown. At the moment it's going black to grey to brown as the black met the brown. It kind of turned slightly greyish because these are cool toned shadows as well. So what I'm going to do, or I would suggest any of you guys do firstly, the brush that actually comes with the palette, the fluffy brush on this end is really, really good to use. Alternatively, I've got a Coastal Scents brush, which is numbered BRCN08, which is a small fluffy brush. And then this one here, which is from Morphe, the E17, which is a small, it is slightly smaller. You can see this one is more fluffy. But again, I'm just giving you options. But if you are going to use this palette as I have done, you've already got the brush. So what I'm going to do is I am going to very slightly tap the fluffy brush into it and then blend around those edges so that it retains the black but smokes it out slightly. And you have to really tap off that brush because we don't want to introduce too much black and then end up dragging it upwards, which is what would naturally happen with a fluffy brush like this. So what I've done is, as you can see, I have blended out the black into the brown so that there's a nice diffusion, a nice mix, and just used the same Anastasia brush with no extra product just to blend around the edges. So even though the colour has slightly gone up, the black is not what is overpowering and overtaking the look. There's a nice kind of contouring, if anything, if that's what you want to call it, of the brown into the black. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to intensify the black even more because with the blending, what can happen is that the black can become more sheer and a little bit more muted and we want it to be really, really black. So again, I'm going to take the same black and then just pat it on top of the areas where I already have it, but again, not dragging it upwards. So 
So here I am again just intensifying that black and then again taking the same Anastasia brush just a tiny little tap and then blending around the edges of that yet again but there should be minimal blending required because you've already done so much blending to begin with it's just about redistribution of the colour and then taking that final M330 brush dabbing it very gently into this time orange soda which is the slightly lighter colour and then just doing a wash over the top just to soften it slightly nothing that will really bring any amazing amount of colour but just to make sure everything's blended nicely with a soft shade okay oh my god <laughs> okay I'm so I'm happy with this and what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to do my brow bone highlight and what I'm going to use today is the Anne Reezy highlighter which is one of my favourite golden highlighters the thing is because the whole eyes are very dark they're very matte it's really nice to go in with something quite shimmery something golden or maybe something ivory white depending on what your preference is just to kind of show that difference between something matte and giving a little bit of shimmer and rather than doing my usual full highlight across the entire underneath I'm just going to focus on the arch area and now just getting that same M330 brush just blending very gently around the edges okay so let's take these off now because my face is dying did I even drop it I didn't even drop anything just shows how good I am <laughs> Oh my god, bloody taken off half my foundation. Eh. Uh. Alright, let's take off the tape now as well. And this one. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fix my concealer and foundation a little bit off camera before I come back and finish off the eyes. Okay, so as you can see, I have fixed my under eye area. Just for reference, I used the new Studio Fix uh, concealer by MAC in NC35. So now let's sort out the lower lash line before we finish off the eyes. So I am going to yet again go in with Noir. You're probably thinking, more black? Yes. But there is a way to do it, again, without looking like, you know, one of the walking dead. So I am, in this instance, going to use one of these small pencil angled brushes, whatever they're called. This one is a MAC 226, so it's an angled brush. People tend to use it to do their upper eye line. I mean, it's up to you to use whatever you want with whatever brush. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stamp it very closely to my lower lash line not going to drag it just stamp the color in not blending it out or moving it around or anything like that just as close as possible to your lower lash line so as you can see i did not tap my brush back into the palette even once this is just from one application and just stamping it in so now what we are going to do is we are going to now take the shade burnt orange again and then take a very small fluffy brush I am just going to use one of these two brushes I showed you guys earlier just because it's all that I've got right now. I'm going to use the Coastal Scents one. A small pencil brush is normally better it's just because this is what I've got lying around. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to quite generously apply it to the brush, tap it off and then start to blend out that area underneath. And that is where we will start to blend out the black, soften it but there is still there the same way that you've got the gradient approach above you will have it below as well but without it looking too much okay so now what I'm going to do now this is optional for you guys some of you will be like what's the point black liquid eyeliner on top now for me for completion for my anal control freak self I have to have liquid eyeliner up there especially because once I apply my false eyelashes I still want something to be able to hide the black of the glue now the easiest thing would be to follow that line which was created by the tape no you won't be able to see it from a distance but you will be able to see eyeliner from up close again this is down to personal preference so what I'm going to be using is my usual NYC liquid liner 
Okay, so here you can see that the eyeliner is done and whilst you'll probably think, what's the difference? I can still see the difference. It's almost as if you can find the kind of the end of the look right where the eyeliner sits. It's also not a smack bang in your face black eyeshadow. We've toned it down by blending, etc. So therefore you can see the black eyeliner there anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put some glue on my eyelashes. These ones are Coco Lashes in the style Goddess. They're huge, they're voluminous, and they're just my fave. So I'm just gonna put them uh, some glue on them and put them to the side. So while the glue dries, I'm just gonna put on some mascara. This is the NYX Worth the Hype Mascara. Okay, so next I'm going to use the same Amrezy highlighter and apply it to my tear duct area. This will open up your eyes slightly. Again, from all the contrast of the darkness can kind of swamp you and swallow your eyes up, especially depending on how small or big your eyes are. So putting something shimmery just in this area here will definitely kind of open them up slightly and stop them looking so close to your nose. And now for the waterline. Now, again, this is up to you what you decide to do. Some people like to put like a skin colored eyeliner on there. I personally prefer if I'm going black, I'm going all black. So I'm going to be using some coal to apply to my waterline. I'm just using the Rimmel Scandalized Coal Gargel in the shade black. Okay, and then lastly, to finish off the eyes, I'm just going to do the lower lash line using this Maybelline Push Up Angel Mascara. This is my favourite lower lash line mascara because it's got a very thin and long wand. So this is it. This is how your eyes should look completely finished. As you can see, I've used really huge eyelashes just because if you use small ones, what's the point? You won't be able to see them properly. So this is how to do a really nice easy simple straightforward black smoky eye now you're probably thinking okay but that took a long time i didn't say slow it does take time but it's still a very simple and easy process it just requires lots and lots of blending so i'm just going to finish off the rest of my face and then i'll be back in a second so here i am with the rest of my face done as you guys can see when it comes to wearing black on the eyes the rest, of the, st uh, the rest of the face has to stay relatively neutral. Now that is down to personal preference. If you want to wear bright red lips, you wear bright red lips, ain't no one stopping you. This is just the classic way of how you would accompany a black smoky eye. So what I've done is I'm wearing Too Faced Birthday Suit Liquid uh, Lipstick with Oak Lip Liner from MAC. And then I'm just wearing fairly neutral a blush, a contour, and then the Amrezy highlighter to highlight my face. So I hope you guys found this video useful and helpful. Um, if you'd like me to do any other how-to videos that you may be interested to see how I do things, feel free to let me know below and then I'll get to them when I can. Other than that, I hope you guys are wonderful and great. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.